good morning to one and all uh, myself olet vijay kumar assistant professor school of pharmacy uh, satibama institute of science and technology so today i am here with uh, to present that my topic about of the introduction to the pharmaceutical doses forms so before going to in detail uh, pharmacy field uh, it is an uh, important thing where we are going to be uh, prepare the medicine and we are going to be dispense the medicine and we are going to be uh, market the medicine also first let me start about of the definition for the drug so a drug may be defined as an agent intended for use in the diagnosis mitigation treatment cure or prevention of the diseases in a man and the human beings so in case of the animals whatever the doses forms we are using those are referred as the veterinary doses forms not related to us and coming to the next one is the doses form so drugs are rarely administered in their original pure state so normally when we are administering the drugs in the pure form means that may be lead to the adverse effects toxicity also may be happen so why because there is no uh, specificity of the dose uh, dose quantity so in that case what we are doing means we are going to be convert the drug into the suitable form that suitable form is nothing but of a doses form so uh, drugs are converted into the suitable formulations which are called as a doses forms every doses form is a combination of a drug and other non drug components so every doses form it having the two components one is the api api stands for the active pharmaceutical ingredient in other words it is also called as a drug substance and along with the drug substance we need the non drug component that non drug component itself is nothing but of a excipient so without the excipient we cannot prepare a doses form so the non drug components are called as a additives here you can be see this is a parenteral doses form inside a parenteral doses form here you can be see the drug substance that is a api and along with the excipient then we can be convert that drug and excipient in the form of a doses form here you can be see in the picture also various types of the doses forms are there next thing where we are getting the drug substances from where we are getting the drug substances means we have the six major sources are there one is from the plant source animal source mineral source or earth sources microbiological sources semi synthetic sources or the synthetic sources and recombinant dna technology with this technology also we are going to be prepare the doses forms let us see one by one plant sources so we know well uh, plants are abundantly available and <coughs> many drug substances are available from the plants plant source is the oldest source of the drugs most of the drugs in the ancient times were derived from the plants almost all plants are used as a leaves stem bark fruits and the roots leaves the leaves of the digitalis purpurea this is called digitalis purpurea that contains digitoxin that digitoxin act as a cardiotonic the persons who are having the congestive heart failure they used to take the digitoxin that digitoxin is obtained from the leaves of the digitalis purpurea next one leaves of the eucalyptus that gives a oil of eucalyptus this is a volatile oil which is an important component of a preparation for the cough syrup third one tobacco leaves that tobacco leaves gives the nicotine nicotine uh, act as a cns stimulant most of the cigars in that we are using the nicotine next one atropa belladonna atropa belladonna containing the atropine atropine is a chemical moiety that useful for the treatment of the motion sickness so these are all the leaf spots next flowers not only from the leaves we are getting the drugs from the flowers also poppy papaver somniferum gives the morphine so morphine is also a it is a opioid analgesic and vinca roseus vinca roseus gives the vincristine and vinblastine these two drugs are used as a anti cancer drugs and the rose rose gives a rose water it is used as a cosmetic next one is the fruits so from the fruits like uh, senna pod that gives a anthracene which is used as a purgative for the treatment of the constipation next one calabar beans gives a physostigmine which is a cholinomimetic agent 
next one is the seeds seeds of the nuxvomica that gives the strychnine strychnine is a cna stimulant it act on the brain next one castor oil seeds so that castor oil seeds from that we are getting the castor oil that castor oil is act as a again laxative especially in the for the case of the pediatrics uh, we are using the castor oil next one is the roots so ipica kunha root gives emitin that used to induce the vomiting as an accidental poisoning it also has a amoebicidal property so some people accidentally they may be take the poison substances to induce the vomiting we are administering the ipica kunha root that containing the emitin that emitin is act as a uh, inducing the vomiting next one ravulfia serpentina this ravulfia serpentina containing reserpine the reserpine act as a antihypertensive agent antihypertensive agent means uh, which is uh, useful for the treatment of the blood pressure next one bark cinchona bark this is cinchona bark containing quinine and quinidine so quinine is act as a anti malarial agent quinidine is act as a anti arrhythmic agent anti arrhythmic means uh, to correct the rhythmic manner of a heart anti malarial means to prevent from the malaria and hyoscyamus niger that containing the hyosin which is also act as a anti cholinergic agent next one from the stems so chondrodendron tomentosum gives the tubocurarin which is a skeletal muscle relaxant it is mainly useful uh, in the case of the general anesthesia so that's all about of the plant sources the next thing is the animal sources so as i mentioned you drugs are obtaining from the natural sources in that the plant is one thing there we just seen next one is the animal sources so we know many of our uh, elder people they are suffering with the diabetes so any person who is having the diabetes they used to take the insulin where we are getting that insulin from the pancreas of the animal pancreas is a source of the insulin useful in the treatment of the diabetes next one urine of a pregnant woman gives the human chronic gonadotropin this is an hormone useful for the treatment of the infertility sheep thyroid it is also a source of the thyroxine used in the hypertension and the thyroid disorders also and cod liver is used as a source of vitamin a and vitamin d vitamin a deficiency causes the night blindness vitamin d def deficiency causes the osteoporosis to treat that thing we have to take the cod liver that cod liver is obtaining from the cod liver fish next anterior pituitary is a source of the pituitary gonadotropins used in the treatment of the infertility blood of animal is used in the preparation of the vaccines and stomach tissue contains the pepsin and trypsin which are digestive juices useful for the treatment of the peptic diseases in the pictures you can be see so pancreas sheep thyroid and cod liver and the stomach tissue next one is the mineral sources so these minerals can be classified into two types one is the metallics and the non metallics metallics means we have the examples of iron for the treatment of the iron deficiency anemia mercurial salts for the treatment of the syphilis and zinc zinc supplement and iodine is act as a antiseptic and iodine supplements are also used for the treatment of the thyroid condition also next one gold salts that also useful for the treatment of the rheumatoid arthritis and other thing Uh, miscellaneous sources fluorine used as a antiseptic property borax has antiseptic properties selenium sulfide is useful for the anti dandruff shampoos the persons who are having the dandruff uh, we we used to take some kind of the shampoos that shampoo must have the selenium sulfide you might be seen in the label of the shampoo preparations also next one petroleum petroleum is used in the preparation of the liquid paraffin that liquid paraffin also act as a laxative other thing is the microbiological sources students uh, we might be know that uh, when we are facing the microbial infections we used to take the antibiotics again where we are getting the antibiotics from means we are getting the antibiotics from the microorganisms itself see here penicillianum notatum this is the oldest drug it is a fungus which gives a penicillin 
actinobacteria that gives a streptomycin, aminoglycosides such as gentamicin, tobramycin are obtained from the streptomyces and the micromonospores. So, here uh, various kinds of the antibiotics, their source I have mentioned, bacitracin that is obtaining from the bacillus subtilis, polymyxin, bacillus polymyxia, amphotericin B, streptomyces nodosus, chloramphenicol, streptomyces venezuelae, tetracycline, streptomyces areophasinus and erythromycin streptomyces erythreus like that. Next synthetic and the semi-synthetic sources when the nucleus of the drug from the natural source as well as its chemical structure is altered we called it is a synthetic drug. Semi-synthetic means when the nucleus of drug obtained from natural source is retained but the chemical structure is altered we call it is as a semi synthetic. Examples include um, epomorphine, diastyl morphine, ethanyl estradiol, homotropin, ampicillin, methyl testosterone. Most of the drugs used nowadays such as anti-anxiety drugs, anti-convulsants are nothing but of the synthetic drugs. Here you can be see what is the difference between natural versus the synthetic versus the semi-synthetic. Ergotamine. Ergotamine is a naturally obtaining drug from the plant of ergot. Uh, this is converted into the bromocryptin and other forms that is a semi-synthetic form for your understanding purpose. Next one is the recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology involves the changes in the DNA by enzyme restriction endonucleus. The desired gene is coupled to rapidly replicating DNA, viral bacteria or the plasmid. Advantages are huge amount of the drugs can be produced. Drugs can be obtained in the pure form. It is less antigenic in nature. Disadvantages are well equipped lab is required for the preparation of the recombinant DNA technology drugs. Highly trained staff also required to prepare such kind of the drugs and it is a complex and complicated technique. That is all about of the various sources of the drugs, plants, animals, all those things we have completed. As I told you, a drug never to be take in a pure form. It should be converted into the doses form. I already told you doses form is a simple form for easy absorption to produce the good bioavailability. See here, it determines the physical form of the final pharmaceutical preparation is a drug delivery system which is formed by technological processing. So, as I mentioned you earlier, pharmaceutical doses from containing the two things are there. One is the API and the second one is the excipient. Here you can see drug and excipient both can be formed the doses from API, excipient combinedly gives a tablet doses form. So, next one. Why should we convert the drug into doses form? Important thing. So, here you can see when we are taking the uncoated tablets, uncoated tablets when you can be placed on the tongue, what we can be feel? We can be feel the bitter taste. So, that is why what we are doing means we are providing the coating to the surface of your tablet. So, that can overcome the bitter taste of your drug that is one reason. Second reason when we are placing the drugs in a open environment the drug will be go for the degradation. So, to prevent that degradation again we are providing the film coating that film coating avoids the degradation of your drug. So, the first one is the to protect the drug from the oxidation. Examples vitamin C, ferrous sulphate and the next one aspirin that go for the hydrolysis. So, to prevent that degradation problems we are giving a coated tablets that is one reason. Next one some drugs are there when we are taken orally that drug will be releases in the stomach. When we are taking the drugs continuously, we may feel the irritant effect in the stomach. So, to prevent that, to bypass the release of your drug in the stomach, to aid the drug release in the intestine, we are giving the enteric coated. Here you can see, to protect the drug from the destructive effect of the gastric juice of the stomach after oral administration. Third one, to provide a safe and effective and accurate doses form. Third one, to conceal the bitter test, as I mentioned you, to mask the bitter test, we are providing the sugar coating or syrup coating. 
and the next one is the to provide the optimum drug action through the inhalation therapy when the persons are having the asthma in such a case we have to take the drug through the inhales that releases the drug directly to the lungs in adequate quantity next one some persons are they they may have the constipation continuously for that case what we are going to be administer means we are administering the suppositories into the rectal cavity that's why rectal suppositories we are preparing next one to provide for the maximum drug action for the topical administration. So, when the person is having the superficial infections, topical infections, in such a case, instead of taking the drugs through the oral route, we have to administer the drugs through the over the surface of the topical uh, membrane, nothing but of a skin membrane. Further examples are creams are there, ointments are there, and in case of eye infections, we are administering the eye drops, eye ointments, many things are there. Next, to provide sustained release and the controlled release action. So, normally any tablet if you are taking means the duration of action is very short. If you can be convert that drug into controlled release formulation means thereby instead of 4 hours of the duration that 4 hours we can be lag into the 8 hours, 12 hours and even for 24 hours also such type of the formulations are called as a control release formulations. At last to provide liquid doses form of the drug soluble in a suitable doses form. So, these are all the reasons why we are converting the drug into the doses form. Next, what is the concept involved? What the subjects are covering? while preparation of your doses form means. So, here you can see a finished pharmaceutical product to get the drug into final doses form various things are to be considered. For example, physical pharmacy in that we have to be considered what are the physical properties of the drug, what is the physical form of the drug, particle size, micrometric properties, solubility, diffusion, dissolution, partition coefficient, all these things have to be considered. And by knowing these physical properties, we are going to be processing into the form of a doses form by milling, blending, granulation and encapsulation. After that, we are converting that into doses form, development of a doses form, characterization of a doses form, optimization of a composition and the process. At last, biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics. So, once the doses form is completed, we are administering, after the administering, how much amount of the drug is present in the systemic circulation, how your drug will get distrib uh, distributed, metabolized, excreted, that include the biopharmaceutics. By studying of all these things, we will be get the effective, stable, safe doses form. With this, we are ending the session about the first topic, uh, introduction to the doses forms. Hope everybody got understood. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you students.